the information about gravity has to be encoded in something more fundamental, deeper than any one of us. It has to be encoded in the underlying structure of reality. It has to be encoded in the very fabric of space and time. So if you close your, your eyes and imagine yourself possibly in out of space, uh, possibly out of anything at all, even very far away from, from the Earth, the feeling of gravity that you may have is probably the most blissful feeling that you can ever imagine. This notion of free fall is in fact complete freedom from anything, complete distraction from anything at all. In here, this astronaut is in fact orbiting the Earth. She is very much experiencing gravity, but she doesn't feel anything at all because gravity affects every single one of her cell in her body, every single one of her atoms, every single one of her particles, in exactly the same way. And there's something very universal about gravity in how it affects everything, everyone, you and me, but also every particle throughout the universe in exactly the same way. And so in experiencing gravity as fully as possible, in fact, you don't feel anything at all because it doesn't tear your cells apart. It doesn't push you. It's actually so complete freedom. And you may not experience it here every day in your life, but in fact, uh, this universality of gravity and how it affects everything and everyone in the same way was experimented by Galileo already quite some centuries ago. And here I'm going to show you a little clip from uh, the Apollo mission. This is from Apollo 15, astronaut David Scott. And uh, I'm going to press play in a second. And I want you to notice two really, really important fundamental things. Uh, the first one is that on his right hand, he's going to be holding a hammer. So you can't quite see it right now, but hopefully you'll see it a bit more clearly when I press play. And on the left hand, he's holding a feather and he'll drop them on the moon. And hopefully, if it works out, you'll see that they will fall at exactly the same rate. And he does so on the moon, not because gravity is any different on the moon. Gravity is universal, it's the same. He does so on the moon because there's no atmosphere on the moon. And so there's no friction, there's no distraction from the thing that we have here on Earth. And so we can experience this universality of gravity much more profoundly. That's the first thing I want you to notice. But the second thing, even more fundamental, I want you to notice is that, can you just imagine, this is some, uh, how was it, more than half a century ago. This is Apollo 15 mission. He is one of the first 10 people to step on the moon. And what he's the most excited about is not to be the, one of the first people on the moon, it's actually to test gravity and to see that it works and how universal it is. So I'll press play on a second and hopefully you'll share this excitement about testing gravity as astronaut David Scott does. They'll hit the ground at the same time. How about that? <laughs> Did he like that? Well, it was correct in his findings. And I'll uh, drop the two of them here and hopefully they'll hit the ground at the same time. How about that? <laughs> He's so excited and I can play it over and over again and every time he works out, it's amazing. <laughs> and really, this is so fundamental. It is this universality of gravity, completely unbiased. It, it affects a helmet, it affects a feather, it affects light itself, something as light as light itself. It affects anything that exists, it doesn't even need to have mass in the same way. This complete unbiases of gravity, this complete universality of gravity. And that's really so profound that it pushed Einstein to understanding that if gravity affects us all in such an unbiased way, in exactly the same way, it can't be encoded in us as massive object. The information about gravity has to be encoded in something more fundamental, deeper than any one of us. It has to be encoded in the underlying structure of reality. It has to be encoded in the very fabric of space and time, intertwined together. 
Nowadays, we understand, thanks to Einstein's theory of general relativity, that gravity is a manifestation of the curvature of space and time. We understand that massive objects like you and me and the Earth and the Sun, they curve the fabric of space-time around themselves. And now we are all living on this space-time. We are all experiencing this space-time. We are all experiencing this curvature, and that's how we're experiencing gravity. We understand that the more massive an object is, the more curvature it makes, and the greater the gravitational attraction. But for anyone living on that space-time, it will be affected by gravity in the same way. And in fact, everything, everyone throughout the universe at all ages is connected through this structure of space-time, is connected through this curvature, and therefore is connected through gravity. In fact, there's no notion of curvature, there's no notion of gravity at any single one point. The very notion of curvature is in the connection between different points with one another. We can imagine space-time as a series of events, and gravity is the thread connecting this fabric of space-time with one another. Now, on the surface of the Earth, which is a curved surface, this experience is very tangible because at any one point, for instance here, we do have the impression that space is flat. And it's only in connecting different points which are further and further away together that this curvature of the surface of the Earth emerges. Now, you may think that this is just a cartoon picture that I'm trying to convey to you, but in fact, this is our understanding of gravity. And this understanding of gravity is so precise that we can actually predict from the curvature of the Earth the motion of the Moon around the Earth within a millimeter precision. And this is so precise that if we wanted to do any better, we would need to account for the leaves growing on the trees on one side of the hemisphere in the spring right now, right here, while they are falling down from the trees on the other side of the hemisphere. And that changes ever so slightly the distribution of masses around the Earth, and that changes ever so slightly the curvature that the Earth is creating around itself, and that changes ever so slightly the motion of the Moon around the Earth. We are understanding through the curvature of space-time and space and time, this understanding of gravity so well that it not only enables us to understand how we connect different points in space together, it also enables us to understand how we connect different points in time together. And right here, right now on the surface of the Earth, through the curvature of the Earth, we have a perception of how we connect different points in time together. We have a particular flow of time that we are perceiving. But for satellites on orbits above our head, they connect different points in time ever so slightly differently because the curvature at that stage is ever so slightly different. And so, in fact, that affects the flow of time perceived by satellites on orbits above our head as compared to what we are perceiving right here on the surface of the Earth. So, for instance, for Sputnik, the first satellite launched in 1957, these were 68 years ago. Of course, Sputnik is no longer there, but if he was there, in that period of time, Sputnik would have felt as an amount of time slightly less than we do. One second less, because the curvature experienced by Sputnik on orbit is slightly less than what we do. That means that one hour on Earth is actually one hour for the satellites on orbit above our head, plus a tiny, tiny little bit more, which is one microsecond more. So if you imagine that we are here at the Hey Why um, How the Lights Get In Festival, and in within an hour, what we are experiencing here for the satellite above our head, they're experiencing about 1.5 microsecond more. And in that amount of time, which is unperceivable for us, light propagates about 300 meters. And so that means that GPS positioning satellite that are located on top of our head would, within an hour, have a perception of time and therefore have a perception of space 
which is 300 meters different as compared to us. And so all of the mobile phones that you have been using, all of the GPS positioning devices that you have been using to be here, right here, right now, would be wrong by at least 300 meters within an hour. And after a day, they would tell you to come somewhere in Wales to have a look at the festival. To continue watching this video, click the link in the top left or in the description below. With a free trial, you can enjoy the full talk and thousands more. Thank you for being part of the conversation.